Hi folks, welcome back to Stacy Can Can. Today I'm making Greek yogurt. The ingredients you're gonna need for the Greek yogurt is for this particular recipe, which I'm using from the um, Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving, another great ball recipe book. I use a lot of recipes from this as well. These are all tested recipes and ready to go for you. Um, what you will need for this recipe is eight cups of whole milk and a half a cup of unflavored yogurt with active culture. So you wanna make sure that you look on the back and it should say under the ingredients, live active cultures. Some of these will have anywhere from three to six different types of active yogurt cultures. I have found that I cannot pronounce the names of these, so I'm not even gonna try, but um, you can you can Google Google them. This um, this is a this is a good one good one for that. So um, that's what I'm using for the ingredients. The tools you will need is um, um, a colander. You'll need some cheesecloth or a fabric of some sort because you will have to strain the yogurt when it's done. We obviously you need a, a large pot or pan. You need some whisks. Um, I prefer using a whisk. I think it blends things easier. You could use a spoon with it too, or a big wooden spoon, big spoon of some sort. And then also um, a, a thermometer. And just to, cause you wanna, you wanna get the, you wanna get a, the uh, milk up to 180 degrees and then you have to drop it down to 110 degrees. So it is really important to have a thermometer. There are some other ways if, that you can, kind of gauge if you want on what the temperature is. I'm not great at that. I do like the precision of using a thermometer. So that just makes me feel a little more comfortable. And that's what the recipe book calls for as well. The other thing you need is a cooler, a large cooler, um, which I, I don't have right here in front of me to show you, um, and, a, and a heating pad. Uh, a heating pad works great because you can put, you can set the, the pot into the cooler with the heating pad to keep things kind of warm um, for the six to 12 hours needed to strain the whey uh, from uh, for these live active cultures to start working in the in the whole milk and to um, separate the the milk product from the whey and the longer you leave it in there uh, sitting the the thicker and creamier it's going to get we are using whole milk for this, I've seen some recipes with mixed in with some half and half. Um, apparently you can't go down to 2% in some of these recipes, but I think the lower fat that you go, the longer it's gonna, it's just gonna be a little more watery and a little runnier. And I don't think it's gonna taste as well as if you use whole fat. So, but that is up to you. Again, this is a good recipe as it has been tested. So with that, let's get started. First thing we're doing is we're pouring the eight cups of milk <laughs> into the pan, our stainless steel pan. And now I've turned the heat up. I've got it on high, um, well, medium high. We want to get it up to 180 degrees, which is right about there. Now it is just to right before a boil, uh, kind of a simmer, simmery, simmeryness. So I'm just gonna give it some good stirs and you wanna stir constantly while you're doing this. I'll go ahead and show you, we are now up to 180 degrees. So I've gone ahead and cut the heat. And once it's cooled down to 110 degrees, we will add the uh, yogurt, the live culture yogurts. So you don't need to stir anymore because it's done being on the heat. So I've, we're done stirring. We're just gonna let it cool off. Temperature is now at 110 degrees. So we are gonna just gently put in the, I've, I've set out the yogurt room temperature. So we're not putting something super cold in there uh, into the warm milk. And I, uh, this is a, um, a half a cup of the yogurt, the live, with live cultures in it. And I'm gonna take this out as well, so we don't need it. And we're just gonna get this good and stirred. All right, and now that I have it stirred, we're gonna cover the pot 
and put in the uh, cover the pot and put it in our heater area. So I've placed the cooler in another room off to the side so it, it won't be disturbed and I've put the pot of the milk warmed milk with the um, active yogurt cultures in in the uh, in the cooler here with a lid. I have my heating pad here. I do have it set to uh, just onto low. That's that's about all you that's all you need it to be. And then I did put a towel at the bottom of the cooler as well, just to kind of keep it a little bit insulated. And we'll go ahead and cover this. Um, this is a great way to do it if you don't want to put it in your oven, because you can do the same thing in the oven by wrapping the pot in so a bunch of towels and then just turning your oven light on. Um, but it also takes up space in your oven for a good 12 hours. That one, that will take longer. This, doing it this way can take up at, you know, anywhere. It can take about six hours to do, so we're going to check it then and see how much uh, of the yogurt has separated from the whey, the watery substance that you find in yogurt. So I'll give it a check in six hours. Um, but oftentimes, you know, you can even leave it up to 12, just depending on how thick you want your yogurt to be. So. We'll just kind of check it out as we go. The Greek yogurt is done. I'm taking the lid off here. It's a little, it's still a little sweaty. And you can notice there's a, it almost has a, it's a solid consistency. And that watery stuff you see rolling around is the whey. So I have a colander here and I have lined it with two layers of cheesecloth and we're gonna pour it down into the sink here. See, look how look how gloppy that is. Got a lot on the bottom. Use a spatula to get the rest. And I don't know if you can see how. Yeah, you can really see how much it's uh, it's draining here, and it still feels pretty warm. If you don't have a bowl that uh, your colander can fit over and not touch the bottom. I've seen people put like a wooden spoon over it and then tie up the ends. And then tie up this end. And then you have a way to hold. Um, you, can, you can prop this over the edge of a, of a, of a bowl too, to just hold it. So, because you do want to give it some room to be able to drain. And I already have this much liquid to drain after just this little bit of a little bit of draining time. And that's the way W H E Y that we are draining from, from the yogurt. We're going to let it set on the counter for about 20 minutes and then I will put it in the um, refrigerator and let it drain for anywhere from two to four hours or two to six hours. I'll, I'll give it a check after about two. Got the yogurt out of the refrigerator. Um, I did end up leaving it in there for, and I've dumped the water the, the way one time and it was about an inch in the bottom, over an inch in the bottom of this bowl. So um, I was just double checking. I, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and lift this out and Kind of wipe it off, wipe the bottom off a little bit, like so. And I'll just kind of gently remove, remove it. it. I ended up leaving it in there longer than anticipated because I got had a busy afternoon. So, um, and here it is. Look how thick it is. It's kind of nice, isn't it? So I'm going to just scoop it up. And I'm going to just see if I can just dump it on in. And voila. And this is the Greek yogurt we made. I was unable to record this portion of it uh, yesterday. So this is the day after. And it's held up very nicely in the refrigerator. So it has made two containers of this size. I mean, I could have doubled up on it possibly, but it would have overflown, overflowed. So keep that in mind. This, uh, this made, it made a good solid, probably two pounds or a full quart of, of yogurt. So keep, keep that in mind as far as storage space goes for you. Um, 
and uh, it's it's quite tasty. It's a lot creamier than what I got I get at the store. Um, it does have that Greek yogurt bite to it, which I enjoy as well, and it'll be great with with fruit and I don't know whatever you mix it in with a smoothie, um, granola, berries, that that type of thing. So, and with that, uh, if you, uh, the recipe is below, as is. Please like and subscribe my page. That does help. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, feedback, concerns, by all means, reach out to me. I'm on Facebook at Stacy Can Can. I'm on you can at me on Instagram and TikTok at Stacy Can Can. My website is www.stacycancan.com, and my email is info at stacycancan.com. So thanks again for joining me, and until next time, happy canning.